Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and this is the beginning of the year, and everyone's putting out their top lists of anticipated films, and I'm like, hey, I'm a clickbait whore, too. I, I'm a, I'm a do it, but I'm not going to lie to you. This list actually took me a little bit of time to put together. There is a wide variety of films that are coming out in the year 2019, and I am excited for a lot of them. Those of you guys who follow me on this channel and my reviews, you know I tend to like most things, but these are the five movies that I am just dying to see in 2019, and I will be there as soon as I possibly can, and might even go as far as to maim or hurt somebody if it gets me there a little bit sooner. Asterix, joking, not joking. But number five is John Wick Parabellum. Now, this comes out on May 19th, and this is one that I am, I, 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 I probably should put this higher on the list for how excited I am for this one, but I'm a little bit worried about it simply because of the release date. This is coming out in the middle of May, a week after Detective Pikachu and a week before Aladdin, a couple weeks after Avengers Endgame. This movie is going to come out the same weekend that Deadpool 2 did in 2018, and I'm wondering if it's going to suffer a similar fate. They released the last one in February 2017, and it did pretty well. I don't know why they're pushing for a summer release of an R-rated film. That's just where it is in that particular front, but still, this is a conclusion of John Wick's story, the story that began in 2014, and it's just taken over the cult film world by storm. Everyone who sees John Wick loves John Wick. This is Keanu at his best since The Matrix. This is a character that feels so wholly him that I cannot wait to see what happens as a result of this. Never mind the inclusion of Halle Berry uh, and the whole world is after John Wick. Yeah, he's back working and a lot of people are going to suffer for trying to take him out. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, especially considering the fact that they are doing a spinoff TV series for stars called The Continental, and he is rumored to make a guest appearance on there. But I don't quite know if a John Wick show without John Wick is really going to work, but we'll have to wait and see. But also, to be fair, the director of the film wants to do infinite sequels, and I don't think this is going to be the last time we do see Keanu as John Wick anytime soon. Number four, Zombieland 2. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Zombieland, Matt, really? Zombieland is in your top list of the year? It is, and I'll tell you why. Back in 2009, when Zombieland came out, it was a breath of fresh air in regards to the zombie movie genre, a genre that I absolutely and wholly love. It was a nice, fresh take on the concept of what it meant to be in a zombie movie. It was a zombie horror comedy, complete with violence, blood, swearing, and Twinkies. The movie was just fun to watch, and getting a sequel 10 years later, actually to, like, I think the release month 10 years later, is going to be a nice film to see. And after uh, Venom was a success, I think Ruben Fleischer's got his groove back, and I think he's going to give us something that is far better of his name, rather than 30 Minutes or Less, or Gangster Squad. I have a feeling that that bringing back the core cast and adding in a new cast, especially now that Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray are confirmed to be in the film, I'm pretty certain that Zombieland 2 is going to be a lot of fun and a nice worthy addition to the franchise. Also, here's the other thing too, is Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese uh, a couple years ago, I think 2013, made a Zombieland TV pilot for Amazon that was as quirky and as funny as the original film, but it never got picked up. So being able to go back into the world, I'm hoping that they reference that particular pilot as being more of a meta thing versus, uh, versus anything else. But given the fact that Zombieland was always crafted as a TV show, I'm wondering how they're gonna Im import some of that humor into this one, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot of the same stuff. So yes, Zombieland 2 is definitely on my list. Number three, Detective Pikachu. Yes, Detective Pikachu is on my is, is in the middle of my top list. Here's why. I have to see this movie. I have to see this movie. The first time I saw Pokemon the movie back in 1999, I was drunk. I was drunk. I went to the first day for showing of it. Snuck out of school early. I was 17 years old. My buddy smuggled in booze and little chocolate bottles that he got from his aunt. And we got hammered and watched Pokemon. And it was a lot of fun. It was one of my favorite movie going experiences because it was so delightfully illegal. That being said, when I first heard of the concept of Detective Pikachu, I thought it was kind of dumb. I did. I thought it was kind of dumb. Then I saw the trailer and it completely blew away every expectation I had. I want to see this. I want to see Pokemon existing in our world and being handled with a smart, entertaining, funny story. 
I think that Ryan Reynolds is going to do great as Pikachu, even though it is going to be very hard to look at the, the listen to the voice and some of the humor and not immediately equate, equate it to Deadpool. But I think given the fact that we're going to see all of our favorite Pokemon realized in 3D for this movie with a big enough budget, it's going to work out. My only fear is the same thing I had with John Wick is that it comes out in the middle of May, only a couple weeks after Avengers Endgame. And that is going to swallow everything around it. And I just feel that uh, it's not going to do as well as it could by releasing it at a different time of year. We're going to hopefully see bigger, you know, see a good box office return, but I don't think this movie is necessarily going to make it. So yes, it's part of my anticipated list because I want to support it. I'm going to give it money and I want it to be able to be a reality because seeing more movies set like this, I would love that. I think that'd be amazing. We have the technology now to make it well work. So yes, this is one of the reasons why it is number three on my list. Number two, Avengers Endgame. I know what you're thinking, Matt, come on, Avengers Endgame is not number one on your most anticipated list. No, it's not. It's number two. It's a it's a close call between number one and number two, because I've been in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the beginning of May 2008, when I went to an actual midnight showing of Iron Man with my kid sister and, and realized that the Marvel Cinematic Universe was upon us and so happy with everything they've put out thus far. Now, even though I'm not necessarily the most excited I could be for Captain Marvel, I'm still going to go see it. And I want to see how it's going to be included or how she's going to be included in Endgame. But the fact of the matter is, I have watched Infinity War now multiple times and I have to see how it ends. I have to know how they solve this. I have to know how they fix it. And even though I'm a little bit disappointed that they've announced a lot of other projects that we know are going to be happening that kind of undo the events of Infinity War, therefore minimizing its emotional impact, I still want to see how things are going to go. And I still want to see what exactly is going to happen. So yes, this movie that's probably going to have nearly a three hour runtime is going to be the movie to see in 2019, but it's not my most anticipated. In fact, that one, well, it's this number one, episode nine. Yeah. Episode nine is my most anticipated film of 2019. It is. It really, 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 really is. I know what you're thinking, but you've talked so much crap about The Last Jedi. How can you even remotely possibly want to see this film? That's actually the reason why. Because it's either going to be, a, a, I don't want to call it a cinematic masterpiece. It's probably not, right? It's either going to be better than The Force Awakens or worse than The Last Jedi. Either way, it's got to be, it's got to be seen. That's where I'm at with this movie is it's the same thing with Ghostbusters 2016. I ragged on the movie for months leading up to its release. I owed it to go see it. I owed it to myself and to my audience to go and see the movie to be able to accurately report on whether or not I was right or I was wrong. And if I was wrong and if I'm wrong, uh, then I would be willing to completely own up to the fact that I'm wrong and go, like, well, no, I thought it was actually pretty good. I was just I had the wrong opinion. But episode nine is not only a culmination of the Skywalker saga, which already has my fucking money. It is very much a culmination of the past two years almost, or by the time it comes out, the past two years of bickering over The Last Jedi. It will finally give us the opportunity to put that movie, that just terrible, terrible movie behind us and move on to something that is hopefully going to be better. It Yes, it will close the chapter on the Skywalker saga. It will be our last time seeing Carrie Fisher on the screen, which is going to be a very emotional thing. It will probably be our last time seeing Luke Skywalker on the screen. It's going to be our last for so many things. Probably the last time we see C-3PO and R2-D2. The last time we see Chewbacca. That is probably going to happen. This movie is going to be so freaking emotional that I know I'm not going to walk out of there with dry eyes. And I'm okay with that. I'm willing to live with that. The way I view episode nine is that this is, this is a large portion of not only my, my childhood, my, but my adolescence and my adulthood coming to a close. Now, what this movie should technically not be the final chapter. It should be chapter 10. So we get a proper trilogy out of this new one and we forget last Jedi I ever happened. That's not the case, but I think JJ Abrams is going to course correct. He's going to make sure that it gives fans what they want, whatever that might be, because everyone's going to have different opinions, provided we don't have another one of those stupid ass Canto bite scenes and another one of those stupid ass Carrie Poppins scenes. The movie can't get arguably worse than The Last Jedi. But like I said, this is one that I want to dive into, one that I want to enjoy because I hate not liking Star Wars. I hate the fact that The Last Jedi is a bad movie. It shouldn't be. It should have never been a bad movie. The story group should have completely overseen that and course corrected it because that was their damn job. Seriously, what good are they? 
What 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 good are they? They don't even. Eh, 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 I don't want to get into it. The point is, the Last Jedi. I think is going to be the biggest movie of the year outside of Endgame. It's going to conclude this story, uh, not just the Skywalker saga, but so many other parts of it, as I previously mentioned. And it's going to be an emotional gut punch and one that I'm not sure I'm quite ready for. I don't think I'm fully ready for Star Wars in this capacity to end. It's not to say that the movies aren't going to keep coming or the TV shows aren't going to exist because they are. But this is going to be the end. This is the finale. This is where it all lays to rest. I mean, we're talking 42 years by the time it's all said and done. Four decades. Yes, God damn it. It is my most anticipated film of the year. And I think if any if any of you out there are even remote Star Wars fans, it's yours as well. Anyway, those are my top five anticipated films from 2019. I look forward to your thoughts, your opinion. Leave your list below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.